The never-ending construction of housing and buildings in many cities around the world are slowly engulfing the bordering countryside and posing an imminent threat to wildlife habitats. What if there was a solution to this problem? In today's video, we will discuss an incredible architectural concept that will get you thinking. What if everyone in the city lived inside a gigantic building? In the 1960s, pioneering architect Paolo Soleri started the debate about urban growth boundaries and introduced a concept called arcology, a solution to the urban sprawl. The term arcology is the fusion of two words, architecture and ecology. Arcologies are essentially entire cities crammed into a single high population density megastructure. In order to create a balance between human activity and the environment, Arcology proposes dramatic rearrangement of the urban landscape in favor of density, integration, and a three-dimensional metropolis. In Soleri's own words, an arcology would be a highly integrated and compact three-dimensional urban form that is the opposite of urban sprawl with its inherently wasteful consumption of land, energy, and time, tending to isolate people from each other and the community. Although enclosed cities may sound frightening, they would actually take up a lot less space than open cities, which would help to preserve nature. Additionally, arcology habitats will support a significant decrease in noise, pollution, energy use, and fatalities. They would even protect people from bad weather. Living in an arcology would be like staying at a resort hotel. Although living spaces will be smaller than what the majority of us are accustomed to, they will be smarter, better organized, safer, and much more practical than the typical buildings. Huge swaths of land would be preserved by the compact form, protecting the countryside from becoming engulfed in never-ending construction projects and enormous housing developments. Compactness eliminates the need for cars and the tedious time-wasting of commuting by placing workplaces, schools, shops, and recreational requirements all within easy walking distance. An exotic plant-filled atrium on the inside and a gorgeously landscaped nature realm on the outside would be possible, thanks to the significant savings in land prices, building materials, and utility infrastructure. Before we continue, if you would like to learn more about billion-dollar construction projects around the world, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more interesting videos. In an arcology habitat, the human scale is achieved in a densely organized urban environment by enabling pedestrians to move about freely and efficiently. Arcology proposes connecting citizens with food production and efficient use of water and energy to contribute to the general efficiency of the city. Using technologies such as passive architecture, innovative water and wastewater treatment systems and the use of construction materials with a minimum environmental impact, helps reduce the consumption of materials and energy. In other words, it is doing more with less to take full advantage of the available resources. After all, the main idea behind arcology is to grow upwards and inwards, instead of growing outwards. Many science fiction books and films have used arcology as their setting. For instance, in Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell's book Oath of Fealty, a part of the Los Angeles population relocates to an arcology. The narrative explores the societal changes that occur both inside and outside of this setting. More recently, a variety of arcology ideas have been included into the construction of major city projects in video games like the SimCity series, a construction simulator in which players must develop metropolitan strategies and their complexities. Regular cities cause pollution of the air, land, rivers, and oceans, as well as innumerable infrastructure inefficiencies and commute time wastage. Despite this, moving from our accustomed 2D cities which contain tens of thousands of structures of various sizes and purposes, to just a single mountainous megastructure does not make sense either practically or economically. Even if it were physically possible to construct such a massive structure, Doing so would be insane because it would take 50 to 100 years to finish. In real life, 
Few projects have actually been completed, either due to financial issues or unrealistic visions. Those that have been completed are in remote locations. The first known arcology prototype is an experimental town called Arcasanti, which was designed by Paolo Soleri himself in the 1970s to test his design principles. In Whittier, Alaska, a building called the Bijic Towers operates like a small-scale arcology encompassing nearly all of the population of Whittier. The building contains residential housing as well as a police station, grocery, and municipal offices. Another example is the McMurdo Scientific Research Station in Antarctica with a relatively self-sufficient community. It provides living and entertainment amenities for roughly 3,000 staff who visit each year. Its remoteness and the measures needed to protect its population from the harsh environment give it an insular character. Several other arcologies have been proposed in many parts of the world. Interestingly enough, several of these proposed structures take the shape of a pyramid. The New Orleans Arcology Habitat is a triangulated floating platform set to be located on the Mississippi River front. It would house 40,000 people and include everything from shops, apartments, hotels, schools, parking spaces to hospitals, just like a normal city. Its design boasts a triangular all-steel exterior frame with an open frame configuration that divides the structure into three separate towers converging at the top. This design allows severe winds to blow through the structure in any direction with the minimum of massing interference, thereby mitigating the damages of adverse weather. Next, we have the Ziggurat, an arcology habitat conceived for Dubai in 2008. The structure was designed to house nearly 1 million people and would be self-sustainable with all natural energy sources. The building would be green, powered by solar, wind and natural sources and capable of running completely off the grid. The building would also boast an efficient public transportation system, which would run horizontally and vertically. Like the pyramids of the Mayans and Egyptians, this structure in Dubai would be a giant. It would cover 2.3 square kilometers. Another massive self-sustaining arcology pyramid that was proposed for Japan is the Shimizu Megacity Pyramid. Designed to house 1 million people, the structure would be 2,000 meters high, including five stacked trusses each with similar dimensions to that of the Great Pyramid of Giza. This gigantic pyramid city would help answer Tokyo's increasing lack of space due to urbanization. Japan is still determined to complete the project by 2110, and if built, it would make history as the largest man-made structure in world history. At twice the height of this structure is the proposed mega-tall skyscraper X-Seed, designed to tower 4,000 meters over the Tokyo skyline. This structure would have 800 levels that is open-framed and aesthetically similar to Mount Fuji. Residents won't need to leave the building since it is urban, commercial, and residential areas, just like a city. Just when you think that there couldn't be another building as big as the X-Seed, Japan proposed a structure that could reach the heavens. With up to 30 million people residing, the Tokyo Tower of Babel would be 10 kilometers tall and serve primarily as a means of population support. It would likely take around 100 years to build. Some other examples are Endless City London, a futuristic skyscraper with its own ecosystem that could house an entire city, and Crystal Island Moscow, one of the tallest structures enclosing the largest volume on the planet. More recently, Saudi Arabia has revealed plans to build a self-sufficient 100-mile-long, mirrored skyscraper megacity in the desert. This proposed megaproject may very well fit into the category of arcology habitats, and everything you need to know about this structure is discussed in one of our previous videos. If you missed it, click here to watch it. What are your thoughts on the concept of arcologies? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.